Hello, I'm ABX Toy Cat, and farms are a critical part of any long-term survival world, but most people get them wrong and assume it is a list of the largest, most efficient farms they need to build, or they haven't really completed Minecraft, and this is a ridiculous assertion, and for 99% of players, it is patently wrong. Instead, I would say the measure of a good farm is does it save you time, which you can spend building bases, bridges, and big mushroom trees with diamond blocks for the leaves. By that measure, this farm is too big, and this one is probably too small, given that I use it to get all of the wool, which I'll be using to show you five modular automatic farms which you can make to any scale, micro or large, and that is the fun we'll be going into today. With that said, I'm gonna use the rewards from the sheep farm to build something fun to show you five separate different types. Starting, of course, close to my base so that these can run in the background, and also by color coding the five farms we'll be doing. Wow, looks real good, but in the same way your first build always requires some wood, the equivalent of that for redstone is there's three blocks that come up in basically every single automatic farm. Observers, pistons, and dispensers. And although I'll take the dispenser from here, the truth of crafting a bunch of these other ones is they're going to come up handy if you're the sort of person who likes to tinker and maybe upgrade your farms as you go, so it might be worth building a bunch of these in bulk too. Observers need quartz while pistons need iron, but the fundamental is you're going to need a lot of cobblestone and maybe a bit of wood if you want to craft these in large numbers. Also, of course, redstone. So with that said, now we've actually got ourselves 21. That should be enough to build the micro versions of the farms I'll be showing you today. You also need a generic building block for any farm. I think that goes without saying, but today I'll be using glass if only because it allows you to see the redstone behind what I'm doing. And my first farm is one I've wanted to make forever and that is an automatic sheep shearer because I need wool quite often in this world and so having to manually share it just every time I come through, it doesn't sit right with me, it's not a fun activity, and so what do I do? We do this by alluring in a sheep with the promise of wheat, which we're never going to feed him because we're an absolute monster, and then uh, making sure that he is neatly confined in a place where he only has access to one grass block which we're gonna do like so. Place down an observer, have a single grass block, and then on the other block, you wanna have some form of a hopper. This is going to be a way to collect all of the drops. Uh, you could honestly go about the hopper if you were manually going to collect it, but obviously that's not our preference. And so boom, that is as simple as we need. We just need to get the, <laughs> the sheep to get trapped up here nice and easily. So we'll walk him up, and then as soon as he's up, we kind of trick him by placing big glass walls all around. Okay, wait, you not come back here one more time? <laughs> there are easy ways to do this, but I think for the sake of just getting your first farm done, it's very easy to stack him up there and then build blocks all the way around, otherwise that will prevent his escape. Okay, there's only one way in or out, so we lure the sheep in towards me, and then I'm gonna just, I guess, break one of these blocks real quick, get behind the sheep, push him in that last bit. No, 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 you're not coming out now. No, what? <laughs> I, I placed the block, but Minecraft disagreed with me. Okay, sheep comes in, we quickly place this block, then we nudge the sheep the last bit, and then boom, there we go. Sheep is trapped in only one place where he can eat wheat, and it's this grass block over here. You actually need to make it so there are more grass blocks that can feed that first one. I'll say one over here, and you know, maybe to be generous, we'll have one over here as well. Now that that, now there is a way for the sheep's grass to regenerate, and we also have a way to measure that, we have placed a nice little trail between this piece of redstone right here and something which can shear the sheep. We could do the sheep shearing uh, however we like, but this, the, the simplest way, the most automatic way, is simply have have a dispenser uh, which faces towards him and above the hopper. So just like this, we have a dispenser go right over here. Oh, the sheep's kind of getting in the way. We have a dispenser go uh, going right over here. And now, boom, we have a way to shear the sheep automatically. We could, could you know, I wonder, can I use my enchanted uh, shears in here? I'm, I'm gonna have to test that, I'm very curious. Enchanted shears and a dispenser, will they shear a sheep? So uh, right now, obviously, what I need to do is make a button or something, or go a step further and just use some basic redstone to connect this input to this output. Okay, I've come back with a lever purely for my own curiosity to see if it will in fact work. Oh, it does, enchanted shears. Uh, you know, if you want them to last longer, you could enchant them, and if you don't care, you could just put regular ones in there. But yeah, it's more important than knowing that this works, is actually having it be connected, which will be a really simple system. We just make a really basic trail of redstone. Again, these are all my own designs, they're not the most efficient versions, they are just the ones designed to show you how with ne next to no redstone knowledge, you can still design a few different things. I guess we'll 
go around on this one. There we go. With next to no redstone knowledge, you can still design something that does the simple job. This insanely simple contraption just means that when the sheep eats the grass, there will be a dispenser that shears it, and that shears will lead the wool into a hopper to be collected for a later date, which I can show you as soon as this sheep feels like eating. Just like that, we have ourselves a sheep that has been sheared, although as you can see, the lining up of it didn't go perfectly. Um, but yeah, it's, I, I don't even know how that makes sense that it ended up over there. Uh, but yeah, the fun thing about sheep farm is the fact that you don't just have to uh, dye the result if you want, say, green wool. You can actually dye the base sheep itself, which I think is real fun. And uh, yeah, on bedrock, you'll be able to tell exactly what color your sheep is, even without wool. Weirdly enough, you can't on Java. And also, just like any other farm on this list, it's very modular, so you can scale this up as much as you really want. I mean, we could take this exact same farm design and just kind of duplicate it a second time by finding a second sheep. Do we have one lying around here somewhere? You can get black sheep, white sheep, pink sheep. You can get glowing blue sheep if you really want to. The choices really are endless. I think for this guy, we're going to go with lime green. It's just a very pretty non-natural type of uh, sheep we've got. And we're gonna throw him right up there and do the exact same as before. Um, after a certain number of uh, sheep, the scaling gets very different, but for now, it should work basically the same. Let's make a very clear, easy way for him to get up. Let's lead him inside. Let's make a little sneaky way out. And then let's just nudge him past until there is no way out, damn it. You know, I do not know why block placing works so jankly in Minecraft Bedrock, but it does seem to do that a lot. And there we go, now we've got a second sheep which can work under the exact same conditions, but for a different color. If we wanted to, we could even line up all of these into a singular chest. I am not gonna do that right now, because I'm just gonna have a couple of sheep being sheared. This is something that is important to me. The idea that you can start with something, see if the results are good. I mean, maybe even like this, you don't like how much of your wall gets lost, and you want to fix that, then you can work your way upwards on around from there, which is very, very important and very, very fun in my opinion. Speaking of important and fun, I think this next one is something people tell me to make a surprising amount of the time, and so I want to have precisely one in my world so I can tell them that I have in fact done it, but it is the most common request, but also not necessarily the most useful depending on your world, but an automatic sugarcane farm. And if you want to see the similarities to this in a bamboo farm, watch how I make this and then compare it to the farm that you're seeing directly behind you and tell me if you can see any major differences because you're going to need to observe the top layer of the uh, you know of the farm right here as you can see just like this you want to have yourself a single piston facing this way with an observer above it and then some simple way to connect the two I think just having some grass blocks up here and then we'll uh, temporarily move the redstone here uh, have some grass blocks and then connect them using some redstone and now you've got a way to detect when a block gets free tool that is to say when it gets up to there and then you've got a way to push it when it does happen. Observers on top of pistons always guarantees nothing can get trapped and then all you need to do is grow some sugar cane which we'll do by having a nice lovely water trench down here. Looks like the game has done most of the work for me on that. Have a lovely water trench down here which will lead very nicely into I don't know a hopper and that hopper can lead us very nicely into you know we'll just place it facing that way. That hopper can uh, very, very nicely, in my opinion, uh, lead us uh, with our, our, our crops going into one place. To get the actual sugar cane for this farm, I'm going to need to head over here to my insane one in this world, which is the prime example of making a farm because it's fun rather than making a farm because you need it. I don't think anyone needs, uh, you know, upwards of a thousand sugar cane at a time, but if you actually do, it's a really fun idea. And if you enjoy sugar cane harvesting and that's a fun way to play Minecraft, then it's important to be able to have it. A lot of people kind of uh, mistake me as being anti-farm when I say yeah, you don't need to build every farm you have to because if it's painstaking for you to build a farm, if you have to follow tutorials and you don't really enjoy watching them but you're like, well I need to do this or I'm not playing Minecraft right, I think that's where you've missed something. You should be enjoying every part of the process. Look at this by the way, boom, the sugarcane gets knocked into the side. So we grow all of these and we'll show you like that. Wow, the sugarcane no matter how high it gets, will all get knocked down at the same time and end up in the hopper. It doesn't matter how efficient or not you make a sugarcane farm. I'd recommend having a wall here if you want to or have a second layer here which goes into the same place. It's your choice. Um, but what I do recommend above all else is making sure that any farm you build is because either you really like the process itself or because it's going to save you a lot of time. If you spend hours 
farming sugarcane to trade with villagers or something like that, maybe instead of wasting your time on it, it makes more sense to just build one of these. The same is true for wool. If you're building giant pixel arts and you just spend your whole day in a sheep farm, build one of these instead. And so the same thing can be true for the next farm idea, which is going to take place right here. So I'm going to need some water, uh, but the basic idea is going to be simple. We're going to have a single uh, cactus that goes here, here, here and here, and then we'll have some water in the middle, which leads to some form of hopper. In case you're a visual person, here's me now taking the four blocks and placing four cactus on them, just like so. Did you know you can call the plural of cactus, cactuses as well as cacti? Uh, you know, the fun thing about English is you can call basically anything, anything if you really want to, unless you're on the internet, in which case be careful about that. Cactus farms are a really interesting example of a farm because they don't use pistons whatsoever. This makes them one of the cheapest and honestly, one of the most fun farms to get started with if you just want to try something, just dabble in something a little bit while doing something else, uh, because all you need to do is use a single block to make it so that when the cactus tries to grow too big, it gets knocked off by this block. You can do this while they're one tall if you really want to and place a block over there, and so we can place another one over here, guaranteeing that when the cactus grows, it will grow in a way that guarantees that it won't be able to, knocking that into somewhere. That somewhere in this case can be right over here, and we can place our water at this level, but then we make an infinite source and it's a whole problem. Or we can place that, oh, oh look at that, now it's now it's trapped in the middle. Or what we can do to kind of avert that, if we want to guarantee that it goes in the middle, is uh, place some water just like so, and then when we place our water here, and our water over here, they shouldn't mix in the center. Oh wait, it looks like they don't, but you can see here, if you're on either side, you get pushed into the center, and then you get pushed down, which is where you can then have your wonderful, wonderful hopper. Although, in this case, you have to imagine it, which means that all of the cactus that grows will be forced down to here. Hoppers are definitely one of the most iron intensive parts of basically any farm, but they're so useful for the automation of just moving stuff around. It feels good to use them, so you probably should if you have the opportunity to. And uh, so yeah, with that said, let's go back. And let's also, while we're here, let's grab that dispenser that we need. Now I can place a hopper in between these two hoppers, which is gonna be very crucial. Actually, can I break this block or will the sheep fall down? Now we can have, no, the sheep will fall down. Come on, get back in there, friend. Go back to the prison I was storing you in. I know it's not great for you, but it's really great for my marginal returns and for making me feel better about myself. So you've got to understand that in this enslavement system, uh, we kind of just have to do what we do, and for you that means going in a big glass box with absolutely nothing uh, else going on in your life. So with that said, uh, place down our grass block there, and then just try to nudge the sheep up it somehow. Aha! No, no! He, damn it! He's a, he's a smart sheep. He's too smart for my liking. I say as he tries to awkwardly walk around the redstone. A valuable life pro tip is always keep some wheat around you in case you need to get some sheep somewhere. Um, especially when you're working on a sheep farm. But uh, as someone who hasn't followed that life tip, let me just tell you that you can be aggressive enough with an animal. And eventually it has to go the way that you want to go. Probably. That is true. Ah, there we go. Sheep goes back into his place, gets trapped in there. We destroy all of the other junk. <laughs> and the farm works like nothing ever happened. And now, uh, handily enough, they'll both go into one place. Except they won't both go into one place because there's only one dispenser on the... Uh, so on this side, we need to do the exact same thing. Uh, we need to put a dispenser down on top of, I guess, that glass. So we'll just make sure it faces the right way. We could punch this sheep just to kind of make a temporary space. And then we could put our shears in there temporarily. Although I'm not sure we want to do this. But for now, we're just going to test that everything works just great. After seeing the redstone on this side, I have no idea why I didn't do it on this side. <laughs> I guess this glass block got in my way. But there we go. Now we can remove all the excess stuff and have some redstone that we might need for something coming up in the future. Boom. Two sheep farms for the price of one. I hope. Hey, yeah, it worked. Although again, the, the hopper thing, not quite as perfect as you'd like it to be. Um, it, it seems like you waste about 50% in the design we've got here. So improving that is probably a good idea in the long run. Speaking of good ideas in the long run, Let's talk about food farms for a second. A lot of people love the idea of automated animal killers, but the truth is no such thing really exists for anything besides chicken, which is not the idea of food. An automatic cow killer is basically just a cow farm with a way to separate the young from their adults. So this is something I've never really bothered with, but today I'm gonna try it for the first time to make an automated pork chop machine. Partially because I think it's an interesting design, which might save some people some effort and some time and just the, the stress of having a bunch of pumps. Oh no. Sorry. This is, here's my automated sheep killer, by the way. You get one wolf 
and then you get them anywhere that sheep are going to spawn, and boom, you get free woolen land. But yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and find some pigs and try something that I think is kind of fun. Because if you, the one big downside of just having a big pit of animals and then killing them when you need them is you're not always going to be able to tell when to kill them and how many, uh, you know, to kill versus how many to save so you can breed them easier next time. This is one stage of the process you can cut out with a baby animal farm. It's probably a bit cruel, but ultimately it's uh, just the Minecraft version of factory farming. Because the whole idea of our farm today is to separate the pigs from their babies. How can you do that in a place where the pigs are going to be confined? Because the baby is always going to pop out of basically the same space. The simple answer to this one is you take advantage of the size differential. Look at the size of these pigs. I mean, their heads are all the same size because this is ridiculous. Uh, but you can see that they've all got very different sizes. This is very much bigger than a block, while this is smaller than a block. In fact, quite substantially smaller, which means we should be able to take some of the glass I've been using for these farms and uh, actually make myself some pains. And so uh, in the same way that we're going to make some pain for the pigs, we can do so as a way to keep the pigs nice and high up. So um, yeah, we'll make a, a lovely little staircase up to the uh, glass panes, I think, something like this with some glass panes here and here. Then to keep the pigs nice and in place, we'll obviously have to make sure they can't get out in any way. So we'll build a nice big wall around them, just make sure they stay in. Same thing as the sheep farm, like make sure there is no escape for these guys, if we can uh, make sure that is true at least. So something as simple as this should do. And now let's bring the pigs in so you can see what happens. Okay, pigs are really bad at climbing stairs is what I'm learning today. Look, you can just, just come right up here. Okay, there you go. One pig, is he gonna get in? No, we need we need two pigs in though. We need both of you to climb this step. I'm making this as easy as I can for you guys. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna have to get rid of the baby. He's just causing problems, so we're gonna put him in a big pit somewhere where he can't hurt me anymore. I don't wanna hurt your friend, but you are getting in the way. Problem solved. So now we just have two adult pigs, which is important, and we're gonna take advantage of the difference in size to get them right up over here. So climb the staircase. Oh, they can do it now their child is gone. Wow, I'm starting to think your child was holding your back, pigs. Just saying, maybe you should have gone rid of him a long time ago. Um, sorry if I'm saying what your parents have been saying to you your whole life, by the way, if you're watching this. But yeah, with that said, you can see how there we go. Oh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> we almost had it. One of them nudged the other one off. Pigs are not very good friends to each other. Okay, we're just gonna make the staircase much easier to climb now. So there is absolutely no way these pigs can get it wrong. Just up the stairs and onto the blocks. Do you see these blocks over here? That's where you want to be. Do you see? Do you see? There we go. Now, place some blocks over there. No, no, no. <laughs> Damn it. Okay, there we go. Pa place, place the pigs. Nice and simply, just get them on the on the glass panes. I don't know why they're having such a difficult time with this. Man, mob mob physics are just uh, something I would love to study someday. A little longer than a few minutes later. Okay, there we go. Now we've got them in a larger space than we want them to be in. All we have to do is kind of uh, fix up the gap. So by using more uh, pig luring, we can hopefully... Oh man, what is even happening here? Okay, I've tried the carrot. Now I'm going to use the stick. And I'm gonna uh, get myself, oh, there we go. Just just gotta try one more time, I think. Okay, don't actually place down the stick. That doesn't, that doesn't help anyone. That's, no, 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 you're not climbing out there. So we just wanna place these blocks at the expense of those blocks. Just, I don't know why this pig is having such a hard time moving. Just, there we go. Just please stop. Just move out of that hole. Come over here, look, over here. You don't want to be in there, do you? Honestly, though, the entire farm works, even if you can't get pigs into the same area. I, I don't know why I can't today. Because when you breed two of these pigs, as long as there aren't solid blocks for the glass to connect to, the pigs will fall down in this little gap in the floor over here. Although, maybe not if you've got a... They're, they're trying to breed through the glass. I, I really can't describe... People say these animals are intelligent, but I, I have evidence to the contrary I'd like to share with those people. Yep, they are, they are locked in place. There we go. How about that? Baby pig is born, and baby pig will find himself in the gap between the glass and the floor, meaning he'll fall down right here. Then what you want to just do is set up some place for the baby pigs to fall. You could have, uh, I'm going to use some of the water from over here, actually. Um, 
set up a place for the baby pigs to fall, and then deliberately set it up so that that can only go so far before it hits a, uh, I, I don't know, like a hopper, a holding pen, whichever way you want to do that. But there we go. Now we have a collection system for baby pigs. As dark and a fun idea as this might seem, the idea of just producing baby pigs over and over again, and then eventually feeding them into a system is a very clever way. What is wrong with them this time? They have zero excuse not to be breeding right now. They're just really trapped in a little weird situation. So I guess we'll remove these blocks, see if that helps them. Do they need a nudge every single time? And they're not gonna breed about my, <laughs> there we go. And uh, we've also moved the baby pig down the staircase. Not what I was doing right now, but then what you can do is you can wait for the baby pigs to grow at the end of that. And as soon as that has been achieved, you can then kill them, get the pork chops and cook them manually yourself. You could set up a lava bucket or honestly, just have a fire aspect sword and have a way to stop the water before it gets there. So I would recommend, for example, you put a lever there. Oh, I didn't know this could actually happen, but the lever is waterlogged by flowing water, which is incredibly bizarre and a little bit unexpected. A better example would be a button. I'm going to use bamboo for this one because the water can't go through the button. And so at a certain point, your animals get stuck in a place where they are dry and now they can age. You know, this is what people mean when they say age stakes. I'm, I'm pretty sure at least. Um, you are, <laughs> trust me on that, definitely true. Um, you can now age uh, your, your animals such that they get to the point where they'll actually drop some supplies. As long as they actually breed in the first place, I... Honestly, there there are some times when you're playing Minecraft Bedrock where just like why why would you possibly not be be able to breed right now? What is what is going wrong? Do I punch you some more? There we go. We punch them some more and the problems are solved. And so now the only thing left to solve is the important question of how do you stop baby pigs from getting out of this whole mess? Because you want them to be trapped in there, but you don't want to create extra blocks around them so that these uh, don't let baby pigs through. The answer is to do what we've been doing since the dawn of time and abuse slabs and stairs. Stairs do not connect to glass, even though they're basically treated as full blocks from above, which means that you can do whatever you like with the stairs and they kind of act as barriers to, uh, as you can see, as long as you don't have the full side of a block connect with them, you'll be entirely fine. Which means that although stairs like this cause a problem, if we have stairs like, I don't know, uh, this, then no problem is caused. The same can be true over here, and then we'll also do the same on this side, have deliberately, uh, actually, you know, we could, we kind of have the stairs go around if we wanted to, but deliberately have stairs that look like this, and then also deliberately have stairs that look like this, and now there are no gaps for pigs to escape, but also uh, no way uh, to connect the glass to the bottom. And as long as we do the same on this block, I think right now there's a pig sitting on it, uh, we have ourselves a viable way to actually interact and breed with the pigs from all the way through here, while also not stopping the baby pig collection from forming. It is, uh, it ultimately, calling this an automatic farm is always pushing it in my opinion, because no matter how many pigs you have, it always requires manual breeding. But if you want to separate the baby pigs from the rest of it, this is a good one for you to at least try out in your world. Uh, that's, that's, I think, ultimately where you can leave this. Try it out and just hope that your pigs don't get locked in. Like, why does this keep happening to them? They, the only way to stop this is literally to punch them. Although maybe if they're trapped like that, we can at least utilize, oh no, 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 that's not utilizing anything that I thought we were going to. No, 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 you're not coming out. You're not, you're not, it's not acceptable, damn it. <laughs> so much work went to putting you in there. Um, but yeah, uh, utilize, maybe if we move them out and then back in, We'll solve all of our problems. Okay, there we go. We've now got them in a much smaller space, I think. That goes without saying. Let's, oh no, then he's not going in there. No, why, what, what is, what is he? No, damn it, you bad pig. You bad, bad, bad pig. Why? <laughs> just then. There we go, nudged him in. And just like that, we've got two pigs. Hopefully that will actually breed of each other successfully this time. And uh, yeah, you can push as many pigs in here later as you like. In fact, you can even use the baby breeding system that you've got to actually make sure you get more adults in there later. But for now, as you can see, babies get born and they get pushed into a little fun hole down here where slowly more and more babies are produced. Is this ethical? Depends on your definition of ethical. Is it a good idea? Depends on your definition of good idea. But ultimately, yeah, it is a very lean, mean pork chop machine 
that you might want to have in your Minecraft world. If you don't care about farms at all, but you're watching this anyway, by the way, something really cool to me is the fact that glass panes allow you to get up and over a block, but for some reason, pigs don't see this little bit as something they can climb on. So you can use that to get in and out of the farm without letting other animals in and out, which I think is very handy. So uh, speaking of very handy, uh, also something fun you might not know is that bedrock breeding times are way lower than they are uh, on Java. It's one minute between breeds, which is very handy for collecting a bunch of animals in one place. Um, but yeah, the something uh, which I think is even more useful than collecting cactus, which is mostly just used for making dye or honestly experience. You, have I shown you the experience that I collect, by the way? I have never, I never correctly set up this cactus farm. I, I never worked out the water when I set up years ago and just haven't bothered since then. Uh, but I do have a miniature cactus farm nearby here. And I use this solely as a decent source of experience where every 64 cactus green I get, gives me a nice amount of XP for my tools, which is useful when mending is the uh, the only real way to go on these sorts of things. Speaking of the only way to go on these sorts of things, I think the best fuel in the game is lava, and lava is so easily obtained. You can't, you don't just have to go to a big cave or the nether, although they both have large sources of uh, lava, but instead, or even, <laughs> you don't have to make the most insane cobblestone generator in the world. I still enjoy looking at this. But did you know that lava can be easily farmed and it's one of my favorite go-to things to do in the early game of Minecraft if I know I'll be in that world a while. So the way you farm lava is by having some cauldrons because cauldrons can store lava. If you haven't played Minecraft in a while, you might not know that. And you might also not know that you can have dripstone farm lava from one into many. So we're gonna use a block to keep our lava in. I think glass is a fun one because you can see it even in worlds where you're not trying to explicitly show people what you're doing. And then also have some glass panes to keep that lava inwards because otherwise, you know, it might pour out and burn everything else. So be very careful uh, with your lava. But all you wanna do is have some lava up here. I think, you know, is this enough blocks? Let's really, really hope that it is. I think we're gonna be precisely one block short, which is handy because I placed one over here. Okay, so I have exactly the right amount of uh, <laughs> glass panes for this and I can now place my lava just up over there. And now this lava will fall down into this cauldron if and only if I use the important block of a pointed dripstone. This is how it works. The lava slowly falls from the block down to the one below it using these tiny little drips and eventually it fills the cauldron. That's the law explanation. The actual explanation is there's a random chance if you stare at it for long enough that eventually the lava drips in there. This kind of results in a sick auto farm that you might want to try uh, just for fun if you don't have a dripstone cave anywhere near you and you just trade for a few of these from the wandering trader you might find it important to make a pointed dripstone farm which works like this the exact same thing but you have water above it when there's water above dripstone it slowly expands for some reason, all of these ones have expanded all the way to the max, and then you can mine them later if you want the semi-auto style. When pointed dripstone hits a floor that is water, they just kind of uh, flow into it and then into some hopper system later. Uh, but you could also do an automated version of this using the same observer and piston system from before. When the dripstone grows downwards enough that the, uh, the observer observes it, then it gets pistoned out, and slowly but surely, you have a whole chest full of it. This is my very small automatic version. This is my manual version. I think manual farms in general save a lot of time, but you know, I know uh, the automatic farm is the one that appeals to so many people and then boom We have just a big point over here where now I have so much pointed dripstone I don't know what to do with it This means that I can then make the dripstone blocks which I've used for the ceiling up here Very important if you want to grow more of them uh, or you can just use it to make more of a lava farm which means we now have enough pointed dripstone to officially make all of that happen, which is really fun. And honestly, uh, this is the important thing to note about semi-auto versus auto farms versus no farms. I, I really want it to be clear that the important thing about Minecraft is that you have fun when you play the game. Uh, but I think a lot of people say that like, well, yeah, fun is only this very particular type of thing. Fun can be many things. And even something I think quite interesting is a lot of people enjoy playing Minecraft almost specifically to do work. And and that seems bizarre. Like, why would you go onto Minecraft and make a chore of building a big farm? Or why why, why would you enjoy going along just doing the chore of harvesting sugarcane when you could work on building a base? And that's kind of the argument I made uh, earlier in this video. But ultimately, if you enjoy doing those things, and there are many people who do, um, then I don't think it is something that needs to concern you. So we're going to make some cauldrons, by the way. We're going to get some lava. And I'm going to show you how I'm actually scaling up this last uh, farm design. Um, oh, we actually don't have... A, uh, a few dripstones uh, on here yet, which is important. But what's the point of having all of these 
if we don't have the dripstones to actually collect them. And then indeed, we can place the lava just up there. I think that was a waste of a lava placement. But we can now gather all of these extra lavas because here is actually a problem I have in my world. I have 10 dripstone cauldrons, which gives me most of the lava I need for most of my furnaces most of the time. But sometimes when I do a big smelting effort, like with bricks uh, recently to make a subscribe or house fire map, uh, when I'm doing these big projects, I need even more lava, which is why I have this overflow set up here. This has caused all sorts of problems because it's right next to some wood. Maybe a poor decision to put these two things side by side. I can totally admit that right now. However, um, yeah, and so I've kind of been just kind of avoiding, uh, for the most part, putting it properly up here, but that doesn't mean that I actually have to. And so let's try just a little bit better today to make sure more of this is covered correctly. So now we'll move a second lava block over there. It feels as though this should cause more fires, right? Like, how are these... How are these wood blocks not on fire right now? I don't I don't think I properly understand <laughs> what's happening here. Maybe we place torches on all the other sides. The blocks literally can't catch fire. Yeah, that's actually I think that's actually the pro tip. Do you want to stop fires in Minecraft? Just make sure there's enough torches on all the faces. And then they're cut. Because, you know, fire is technically like a block state. You will never be able to have fire if a block's fully covered. That is a bizarre technique that you you probably don't need to know about, but now you have. And so now uh, we need to expand all of this with more pointed dripstone where it's needed, but also, crucially, more cauldrons. So this is actually a scaling up of this that I need to do. Let's take all of that iron that I just took and make some cauldrons, and most importantly, make the cauldrons where the lava sources are. And wherever the lava sources are, uh, we'll actually have the ability to make more cauldrons in the future, and eventually things will be real good. I think we should make it a block lower down. So this cauldron is already filled up, so we'll now take that, take the lava from it, and go up to the surface. Yeah, we definitely want to have this be a block lower down. Maybe we could be like, we could heart, we could, you know, slab it, so that way we can get through, but other stuff doesn't. But um, yeah, now we go up to the surface, make sure that our lava... Uh, prevention technique is working. It seems like it is. Stack up using pointed dripstone, which is the smartest decision I've been making all day. And um, yeah, we'll now remove this and place a dripstone there instead. Again, if there's a block there, it can't catch fire. And then we can place a lava over here, meaning another one of these cauldrons is now able to do a thing. We could probably also, if we place these all the way on this side, it'll keep the lava in as well, which I think is a fun but also silly idea. Um, yeah, just like that. We can now keep the lava contained. And uh, yeah, you can make a farm in any shape and size. I've been making very small farms to show you the modularity of them. Uh, but I think the fun thing to keep in mind is what does your space need? What actually comes from it? If you look at it from up here, I really like that I've now got five automatic farms running at all times. I'll probably expand one or two of these farms. I imagine the sheep farm is the most likely one that I'll have to expand and work on. The lava farm is, uh, uh, but you know, the cactus farm, maybe Maybe it starts producing enough results that I can actually start smelting on enough scale that I want to expand that. Maybe the sugarcane automaticness is so cool and overwhelming that I need to use it again, but having these things run in the background and you can see which one you actually want more of is a better idea than building a whole farm and then later realizing, did I actually need any of that? Was there any point to what I just did there? And that is something important in my humble opinion. So now we can uh, remove all of these blocks. Yeah, the problem with being a block too high up this way is we can't really see what's in the cauldrons without going up one. And uh, But the problem with being a block higher up is if we jump, we hit the ceiling, uh, which is really annoying. So um, yeah, working out the, the way around that is important, but I think this farm is going well. So well, in fact, that I'll commit to my stacking up on pointed dripstone idea. Uh, you know, sometimes it's fun to do things that you know are bad, right? And uh, now we can place another lava right over here. And then slowly, we'll have a big field of lava that won't burn surrounding structures because they can't burn if they're touching something else. Speaking of not burning because we're not touching, uh, I hope that you have enjoyed this video. If you've been curious as to what I've been up to, the, the wedding this week was very fun. Uh, not as fun as infinitely farming lava, uh, but I, 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 I always do think it's an interesting, like, it's, it's a big chore to go to someone's wedding, but at the same time, like, you get a lot of interesting things that come from a lot of people who usually wouldn't show up in the same room together, being together. And always, in my opinion, you always meet some friendly people because uh, when, when you're meeting strangers, everyone has to be on guard. But when you're at a wedding, in theory, everyone there has some common point of connection. It's like going at a party or something. Uh, you have a good time, uh, unlike me right now. Speaking of me right now, I hope you've all enjoyed this video. If you did, wait, powdered snow, wait, powdered snow becomes water when you run into it on fire. Useful <laughs> technique for life, I guess.
<laughs> what a what a weird interaction that Sonic Mo Mojang programmed. Speaking of weird things that I've programmed, yeah, I programmed it. So when you subscribe to the channel, you'll see more of these videos. Let me know if you like uh, tutorials like this one, where we kind of like make a farm as we go and see the usefulness. Um, because ultimately, that's the important thing about Minecraft is having a good time. And uh, I had a good time for at least half of today. Besides the pigs, damn it. Anyway, yeah, have a good day. Bye. Oh, and by the way, I'm still working on getting the diamonds. I've got 158 out of 3,166. Um, so I'm gonna have to do some uh, very much bigger streams and also work on my diamond mining technique. So, you know, you might see uh, after this week that I've mined a silly number and uh, maybe have to talk about it next week. But yeah, anyway, thank you for watching. Hope you all enjoyed because I'll see you next time. Goodbye. Wow, how did that not hurt me or the melon stem? <laughs>